The three internal parts of the Lord's Prayer are to dismantle Satan's kingdom. These are, these are massive feeder lines to the house of cards that is a kingdom that's trying to say it's not there, trying its hardest to stay off source living and has to choose the black and white Masonic squares a little to the left and then to the right of where life is, resulting in a Frankenstein lurch as it walks rather than really happening, man, or spontaneous God living. Deep state is a hierarchy that is called state so as not to frighten Luke's and Mark's, who, like when the Israelites were told that Canaan was filled with giants, are the weak link in the population when it comes to truthful thinking. Truthful thinking has to include the full spectrum. And these more democrat thinkers are seriously perturbed by our true situation. Deep state is in fact a complete hierarchy from Satan, Lucifer down. It's an unbroken hierarchy. Principalities and powers are the third of heaven's angels that Satan took with him and are referred to by Indians as the 200 million gods. Jesse Sabota is opening up the subject that nobody on earth seems to think is important enough to look into, the subject of contracts, the subject of the four regional commanders of darkness. It's interesting, isn't it, that the prophecy in Ezekiel 37 regarding the people of God rising is prophesy to the four winds. Jesse Sabota has a similar INFJ mind to me, Watchman Nee, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and um, Baxter. We're some kind of John Luke split. I think that's what INFJ is. But hey, the living faces, descriptions in Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel 10, Revelation 4, show that we all may have primary faces, but it's no claim to us, claim to fame about any of us lot. We all have all the faces. Song of Solomon 8, which is some kind of concluding scenario in the plan of God, asks the question, what, what do we do about our little sister? Presumably, this is the portion of our population that cannot handle the true situation. This is the section of Israel in the wilderness that had a real block on entering the land. They couldn't countenance it's a subject of giants they were too numerous these uh, sort of people that were afraid to look they, they were too numerous to provide a collective will for the people of God to be strong in faith and take the land God let this whole generation die out apart from Joshua and Caleb Interesting, isn't it, this subject? In every generation, there's the same four faces of living beings stamped across the whole population. That never changes. But somehow, the collective will changes from generation to generation. There are pauses in God's work. And when he moves, things move so fast, we know it's God. But the timings are also buried in the depths of a dance of will between human and God, the Creator. The first pause is the length of time it took from the onset of the slavery of the Israelites in Egypt to the actual lightning-quick deliverance. The cries of Israel had to become sufficiently serious in their gut will that they would be prepared to be part of the deliverance process. The next pause was the 40 unnecessary years 
the Israelites spent dying out and being replaced by people sufficiently fed up of tents and manna for breakfast and quail for tea that they were ready for anything, even giants. The Bible really lays it on thick, though. It says, nevertheless, the distance from Egypt to Jordan was 11 days journey. Our Song of Solomon 8, Little Sister, that seems to be a continuous part of the population from age to age because the features are there today, even on Facebook. There's a flat chestedness, which Watchman Nee in Song of Songs book calls a spiritual lack in love and faith trust. A lukewarmness, an insufficiency when it comes to our task of bringing heaven to earth in the Lord's Prayer. There's no warfare. There's never an attaining <clears throat> of Ephesians 6 warfare. In fact, even worse, there's a flat-out denial of admitting the whole situation. Secondly, particularly the Luke and Mark population, have an open-door policy that has no plank of cedar. The cedars of Lebanon that speak of resurrection life. Doors like this are missing, so all and sundry traips in. Obviously, these things are very real world right now, aren't they? Across Europe, you can, you say, with immigrants flooding in. The issue has become clouded into another satanic reframing of choice. If you let people in, you are kind. If you deny them, you are selfish and xenophobic. Well, this is not the truth. No house lets all and sundry in for the security of the family. In nations, there's always been an immigration and assimilation process. The law of Moses contains the same. But being the only people on earth openly relating with the true creator and content to be known as the people of the living God, there were rules about household gods being forbidden. People could come into Israel, but worship of the true God was non-negotiable. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been the people of God, would they? The clearest indicator that the American open border policy was, as Frankfurt Agenda indicates, solely to weaken America and bring her harm is that all and sundry are let in in huge quantities while one person going through legitimate application procedures from Europe called Torben Sondergaard had his visa played around with by the Fed and he was banged up in prison for 16 months. This is a clear indication of the pure fiction of the open door policy, coupled with the disappearance of children for child trafficking purposes. Same with the whole Ukraine war and 200,000 missing children and some 70 children missing from a ho hotel near me. What should we do about our little sister? This is snuck in near the end of the Song of Solomon poem. Like it's strangely important, yet it seems so tangential. In the context of a love poem, you'd have thought it would remain on the subject of breasts, which are near the heart, so purely questioning love for the Lord or something. Because the whole thing, if you haven't grabbed that by now, is an allegory of our, our relationship as believers with the Lord and making sure we are of the quality of the Shulamite woman being wooed closer and closer to be able to function with this bridegroom that skips on mountains and goes down to the beds of myrrh. So that's sort of the framework of the poem is beautiful, beautiful poem. You can't really, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of the opposite of Alistair Crowley. If you read any of Alistair Crowley's stuff, you are wooed because it's a spell 
like quality you are wooed into darkness by the actual writings holy spirit writings and especially this poem is mystic in the sense that as you read it you are drawn your the eyes of your inner are, are in the heart are opened to see the ways of god the ways of jesus the way he works and operates it it provides huge keys for why the church is such rubbish you know and the, and the song of solomon chapter five is about the watchman beating up the shulamite and watchman Nee certainly knew that in his life and these but but the beauties the beauties of the lord come over in the poem you just have to read it you can't even talk about it you just have to read it so in the context of a love poem you'd have thought it would remain on the subject of breasts and love and that kind of thing um but it's not no it's intimately connected with warfare how bizarre is that talks about battlements and towers with planks of resurrection with closing main doorways is this not about the main components that mark out the third stage of growth in a believer christian in pilgrim's progress togging himself up in the ephesians 6 armor Joshua and Caleb, all ready to experience huge bunches of grapes and dealing with the giants. Half the current population in total denial of a deep state that just tried to cull them. A denial that Jesse Sebatar's information about closing down the connection feeds to principalities and powers is relevant. Just flat out deny that. We're talking about this. Catholicism, Anglicanism at the top are part of the actual seed of hell into the earth. And yet it's done in such a way that, you know, true believers and those that are genuine in heart don't see it. They only see the Christian bit, but it's there. It's the manifestation of fallen angelic order and military might and power order. Templars, Jesuits, Freemasons control Catholicism, Anglicanism and politics. The inability of Marx and Lukes to see this right in our midst allows things like child trafficking, ongoing corrupt bipartite politics that tries to kill you evil church occult feeds that we hear about in 50voices.org you will hear of the forced participation in Gaudi's Sagrada Familia Cathedral in Barcelona many other horrible acts and it's not a very clear sentence this should have made clear that it wasn't forced participation in services it's forced participation in the most horrific ritual at some point our collective will becomes strong enough to face principalities and powers who have no rights here other than what we give them <laughs> 